Groovy. Hey folks, it's been a number of months since my last video. I think the last one I posted was back in October. The long break was mostly due to me stumbling around trying to find a game worth playing. I've left Battlefield 4 for various reasons that I won't bother sharing now. Perhaps that'll be in a video for another day. For the time being, I've been playing a lot of Rainbow Six Siege. And when I say play, I actually mean the realistic version of the co-op terrorist hunt mode. The few times that I've attempted multiplayer has resulted in me receiving my own, own ass handed to me right on a silver platter. I suck at the game. So until I get a lot better at it, I'm going to stick to co-op. I started playing Siege right after patch 1.2 was dropped to give you some sort of idea. What I've noticed with the game is a steady decrease in its frame rate or FPS with each successive patch or DLC. You might be looking up at the right corner of my screen seeing the FPS counter and thinking, Jason, what are you talking about? Your FPS is fine. It is, but it should be a lot better. Further, before I was able to actually achieve that frame rate you're seeing, I had to grind through a bunch of trial and error. And before you say, well, buy a better rig, scrub, check the link in the description. That's the system I'm playing on. Primarily, take note of the two Titan X GPUs and SLI. It's SLI that we'll focus on in this video because as of now, it seems that to be Siege's primary problem when it comes to frame rate. To get the software business out of the way, I'm running on Windows 10 Pro 64-bit, and I'm currently using NVIDIA's 361.75 drivers. Those are the latest. Those drivers, by the way, have had an SLI fix specifically for Siege. It didn't seem to make things any better or worse because I've already tried this with the previous drivers and there was no difference in performance. And as of this video, the game is version 2.1. If we take a quick look at my video settings here, you'll see I'm running at 1440p, full screen, and 144 hertz because that's what my panel can run. Also, all the graphics settings are set to absolute max, except ambient occlusion and post-processing anti-aliasing. Those are both set to off. The multi-sample anti-aliasing is set to temporal filtering because the game actually responds better that way than it does with it off. Here's the second single player situation on realistic mode. Primarily, pay attention to the FPS counter in the upper right corner. You'll see it's a lot lower than what it was in the previous gameplay video that I showed earlier. In this round, I'm actually running the game in standard SLI mode per the NVIDIA control panel. It isn't a bad frame rate, but my GPU should be able to work together to produce a much higher result. Again, look to the readout in the upper right and you can see the load on the CPU and both GPUs. That overlay is provided by an application called PlayClaw. There's a slight problem with PlayClaw in that it reverses the GPU numbering. So when you look at the load in the temperature of GPU zero, that's actually my second card, not the first one. The same applies for GPU one in that readout. It's actually the first GPU, not the second one. Remember that note because it comes into play a bit later. Anyway, you can see that some of the load is being shared between the two GPUs, but neither are being pushed to their limit, and the frame rate is generally less than 100. What the hell? It was through information exchange via the Ubisoft forums that I was able to apply a workaround to this problem. Someone mentioned that Siege is still having a lot of difficulty with SLI, and it should just be disabled. The person who posted that claimed that his frame rate jumped dramatically when he turned SLI off. Let's pop open the NVIDIA control panel and look in the Manage 3D Settings section. You'll see the System-wide tab and the Application tab. Make sure you have Rainbow Six Siege added as one of the apps. When you do that, the control panel will just copy all the system settings over. Once done, 
find the SLI section and basically disable it. Set it to single GPU only, apply it, and then check your results in game. And here we are again, same situation, same settings, except now we have SLI disabled. You'll see GPU 1 taking all the load. Remember, GPU 1 is actually the first GPU, and GPU 0 is actually the second. But more importantly, you'll see that at least in my case, a good 30 to 40 FPS increase in performance, almost across the board. It lends credence to that post on the forums. It really does appear as though Siege has a fairly significant performance hit when running an SLI versus just letting it all go to one GPU. As I stated earlier, I consider this a workaround. We shouldn't have to disable our second GPU to play a game at higher frame rates. But until Ubi or Nvidia, or both of them, can figure it out, this will have to do. What do you think? Do you play with SLI? And are you having better luck than I am? Have you figured out any other workarounds that might help? Let me know in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time. We got you. Hostage secured. Extract the hostage.